Master Lu Tzu said, In comparison with heaven and earth, man is like a mayfly. But compared with the great Tao, heaven and earth too are like a bubble and a shadow. Only the primal spirit and the true nature overcome time and space. So welcome to The Secret of the Golden Flower, Chapter 2. Um, this is going to be a little different from the others. Uh, it's going to be maybe longer too, and I'm not sure if I can cover everything. There's knowledge, and then there's wisdom. And uh, not mutually exclusive, but there really is a difference, you know? Wisdom is like condensed knowledge, like experienced knowledge, like uh, nonverbal, intuitive feeling about what's right and wrong in a particular situation. It's always linked to the situation. There is no hard and fast rule. So wisdom knows, not from books, not from words, but from experience. Right or wrong, all experienced is grist for the mill of wisdom. So what is it about wisdom? Why is it so valuable? Uh, how does it come down to human beings and how do they realize it? How is it done practically, even at a time like today? How can it be done successfully, even under these conditions? So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Tao and primal spirit, heaven and earth. Uh, the Chinese use the example of water, and Tao is almost called the watercourse way, the, the way of the valley, the valley energy. It's more than Tao, it's, it's known that, like, like that in China. So, what is it about water? How can water model wisdom so well that they even name the, the water course way, the, the spirit of the valley, things like that? Well, the thing about water is that it merges together. It flows downhill until it finds a hollow and then it sits there, like a lake. And when the lake fills up, at the lowest point, it begins again, it becomes a stream. And it goes down the valley, the watercourse way, the path of least resistance. Now when two streams of water or bodies of water come together, like the rivers, uh, they all come down to the ocean, and then they come together. And when they come together, at first, there might be some difference between the waters. One is salty, one is fresh, whatever. Some rivers are different colors and everything, different tastes. But when they all merge in the ocean, they all take on the taste of the whole ocean, isn't it? So similarly, when each individual becomes mature in wisdom and contacts the Tao, I mean, to contact the Tao is to merge into it. <laughs> it 
there's really no other option. You have to jump in with both feet and be dissolved. It just happens that way, you know. <laughs> but it's great fun. It's like swimming. I like to go down to the ocean and swim. And one thing I found was the more relaxed I am when I get in the water, the easier it is to swim, even in violent surf. Huh? You want to know the secret? The water is coming in on the top and it's going out on the bottom. So if you want to go out, you go towards the bottom. Uh, you dive down a little bit, let the water take you out, and then you pop up. Uh, the idea is to pop up just near the break so you can catch a good wave and ride back on the top all the way to the beach if you want. Effortlessly. I mean, just the effort of diving down and coming up. Why? You're going with the water. The water is the stronger force than the earth or the air or the sun. At least it is in its own place, in the bottom. So the watercourse way <laughs> leads to all the waters coming together. I could talk about this, you know, forever. <laughs> so, and this is also the way with wisdom. It's natural for a person with wisdom to want to associate with others. Why? Because wisdom, not knowledge, now, wisdom is everywhere the same. The taste of the ocean, uh, the taste of Tao. So when two beings of wisdom come together, they simply merge together. When two emptinesses meet, you can't tell one from another. The emptiness is emptiness, isn't it? So, What wins in life is yielding, yin. That's the way to stay in manifestation. Just like if you swim in the ocean, instead of struggling against the waves, they'll smash you. You go with the water, you know which way the water goes. You follow the water. You just go with it wherever you want to go, the water will take you. <laughs> So similarly, Tao will take you where you want to go, just follow along with the way that the Tao goes. And the way it goes is the yielding force, the path of least resistance. Martial artists know this so well. The yielding force is the center. The center is soft. The outside is hard. So when somebody comes in and they're doing a martial arts uh, demo, you know, they'll say, okay, I'm not going to hurt you, but I'm just going to throw you, okay? Okay, brace yourself. <laughs> and the sucker always tenses up, right? <laughs> Bang! <laughs> you okay? <laughs> so the center, <laughs> the center is the fulcrum of the lever, huh? it's always in the softest, deepest place. It follows the watercourse way. So, same with meditation, same with enlightenment, blah, 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 okay. So, those who have a taste for these things naturally want to flow together, right? Except, in today's world, it seems like there's endless blocks keeping them apart. And of course, all these blocks are of the mind, and if you don't pay it any mind, if you don't, <laughs> it doesn't exist for you, you know. But most people are caught up in this whole thing, you know. Just like today, somebody was posting on Facebook about money. It seems like every other thing that we do, think, say, feel, whatever, is about money. When do we have the time or the, uh, the luxury of not being interrupted enough, enough 
long enough to actually develop concentration. So it's natural that people want to get together, but they also want to have their private space. Part of what it means to come together in a community of enlightened people is that they have respect for your private space. And it's really private. And A, nobody gives a damn, and B, nobody wants to get involved in your private business. You do whatever you like. So, naturally, the people want to come together who are enlightened. But since enlightenment is essentially passive, yin, feminine, yielding, soft, and central, it's hard for them to establish a structure, any kind of a lasting structure, that doesn't also negate their wisdom. Excuse me. This is a real problem. It's a problem for all of us. We all face almost certainty of being somewhat isolated, or maybe even completely isolated. I'm in touch with so many people on Facebook and here and there around. And the, the more intelligent, the more sensitive, the more creative and beautiful they are, it seems like the harder they have, uh, the harder time they have finding adequate association. Family, mates, job, everything seems to conspire to drag them down. And that's, the way, that's what they tell me. And that's my experience too. So, I want to scratch my own itch, and I also want to help others. You know, that's why I'm doing all these videos and all this stuff. And it's a free gift. We'll never charge for this. We'll never make a business out of it. It'll never be organized. You know? But you have to get organized if you want this kind of a community, if you want this kind of association. You have to get a little bit organized. Uh, what are we talking about? Well, in the beginning, we have one slide that says it's, it's inspired by Rajneesh, Osho Rajneesh. Uh, Osho is an old Zen word for the founder of a school. And later on, it came to mean the head monk in a monastery, but really it means the founder, the enlightened one. Certainly he was. And many others became enlightened around him. But we're separated. We're separated by doctrinal attachments and titles and social conventions and business and countries and so many things and it all boils down to money <laughs> money has become you know the, the big uh, enabler but it's also if you don't have it it's a real problem nowadays so my opinion has always been and I've expressed this uh, several times whatever spiritual teacher finally gets the internet is going to become like the next world teacher, almost by default. So let's put together a group and, and research this and try and make the internet work for us instead of against us. You know, there's plenty of free tools out there. We're using Slack because Slack is like a monkey wrench or like a like a Swiss Army knife. It connects to anything. And we find it's really easy to manage things using Slack projects. So, okay, I think there's two things that I just want to clear with you. That, yeah, we're accepting Osho's guidance because nobody can know everything. But it seems like he came damn close. <laughs> so he has an overview much better than any of us had the ideal mm, upbringing and childhood, professional life, and so on. 
And he had the company of some great enlightened beings in his early life. They weren't around when he attained, but you know, neither were mine. But they plant the seed, which you then water and cultivate it. That eventually blooms. So anyway, we're under his guidance. Uh, any point of contention or uncertainty, and uh, we look to him first. That's just, it just works, you know, that way. And plus I spent a long time studying Theravada. So as an ontological system, I kind of use Theravada a lot. But that doesn't mean I am a Theravada. Uh -huh. Because I know what happened. I know the history. As a monk, I had access to all the documents. <laughs> and people who knew what they meant. Um, Jan Ananda summed, summed it all up and he said, there was a, a coup of the scholars against the practitioners. And the scholars won. And the practitioners have been the second class citizens ever since. So the forest monks pretty much keep to themselves and they plant their seeds and then step back and wait for them to grow or not. And they're detached. So I benefited from that experience. And then since I got satisfied and attained what I wanted to attain a little over a year ago, I've been working on, well, how to share it, how to present it. So th this whole second chapter, we're going to use a, as a framework for presenting our idea. It's finally time, you know. The universe is saying, the universe is finally going, okay, it's time. You've been thinking about this long enough. You've been working on the basics now. All the videos, all the series that we've done, up to and including the last one, the uh, Golden Flower Chapter 1 series, are all built on the same foundation, on the same framework. I call it the esoteric teaching, but what it really is is like an ontological toolkit that you can use to analyze or synthesize different frames of knowledge so that they become useful tools for wisdom. Okay, so this is my own personal work and these videos are like cutting edge, state of the art, as I'm researching it, as I'm learning it, I'm passing it on to you. Now, of course, I don't know everything. Nobody can. So, the caveat is, I am sharing my experience. Okay, and I'm just an ordinary guy from suburban New Jersey, <laughs> next to New York City, for all practical purposes, was part of New York City. And uh, the Sopranos, uh, the Sopranos, you've seen that show? Well, they lived in my town. <laughs> it was just like that. So I talk a little funny, you know what I mean? But Really, I've done my homework, and if you go back and dig and look into Osho's books and look into the Theravada scriptures, you will find it's all based on real stuff. Okay, But I try to put it in simpler language. I don't always succeed. <laughs> but, I mean, when I was in fifth grade, my vocabulary was already 10,000 words, so what can I say? Say the secret, wait, the duck will come down and give you $100. So, okay. If we can put something together, then we will all benefit. Okay? I benefit, so I'm doing this totally selfishly. <laughs> I benefit because I get people who are real friends, who see the world pretty much the same way I do who are involved in something similar to what I am, who have uh, very similar aims. Even if they call it by different things, I don't care. I can easily translate between different systems of knowledge. And, and if somebody can't, we have all the tools to enable them to do so, if they really want to. 
What enabled me to do this was a period of training uh, back around 2003 when I learned ontology, formal ontology, web ontology, used in uh, so-called web 2.0 uh, semantic web sites. And I learned it like, like a mathematical science, okay? And I hardwired it into my brain. No, seriously. <laughs> this is what I do. This is how I learn things. I go all intensive on them. And I just practice the heck out of it until I get it. So, okay. I got this ontology language. And I found that by using it, I could detect any kind of illogic or any kind of uh, misdefinition or logical errors like circular definitions and so on in any system, in any language, simply by proper ontological analysis. And that's what all the trees are about, the triples. Well, we're always talking about this triple and that triple. That's what it is. So, okay. So the question is, and the question always will be, if I have experienced something that I claim or that I feel or that I assert is enlightenment, awakening, or what have you, nibbana, whatever you want to call it, is this real or is it bogus? You know? Now, the scholars want to use the measuring stick of religious morality, how well one can follow this complicated system of precepts. Huh? They talk about five major precepts for lay people. But then there's ten if you're an upasika, if you're trying to become a monk. If you're an upasika or upasika for a female, um, you have to follow ten, right? And then when you become a monk, it's like, I don't know, 273 or 227, or depends on which branch, you know. But actually nobody follows them. <laughs> Or if they do, you know, it's done very preferentially and stuff. It's... Anyway, because of these political problems getting mixed up with the spiritual problems, what it boils down to is that all spiritual problems are solved by political means. By who's in charge? Who's the chief monk? What does he think? Okay, that's it. You have to accept it or leave. That's the reality in every monastery, in every temple, in every organization of which I've been a part, even my own, even the one I founded and created. And that's why I resigned. I couldn't see any other alternative. But now the internet gives us an alternative. Huh? It gives us the ability to negotiate and build trust until we're reasonably certain that we're really going to get what we want and what we agree to without caveats, you know, a complete, um, what's that called, consensus platform. That's what we want. We want a conversation, not a lecture anymore, okay? There's some people there have been following every video I've made for the last three or four years. And I know they know their stuff because they read their comments. And although they may not be uh, completely facile with all the vocabulary, the sense of it is coming through that, hey, there's somebody out there who's getting it. So we should be working together. And then we can expand the research tremendously. You know, share, pool knowledge, documents, everything. So a group, even just two people, Two people are three times or four times as strong as one person. And it just keeps increasing exponentially until you get to a certain point. Then something breaks, okay? Gurdjieff has this all scoped out in his system of octaves. If you haven't studied it, man, go take a look at it. So everything starts from the top and descends and there are certain breaks, like a scale. 
Yo ti la so fa mi re so. So arigama para nisa. And it comes down that each half step is a break. So from sa ni is a break. And from fa mi is a half step. So, of course, you can have scales with more than one half step, but in natural processes, it is generally observed that there are at least two half steps, two breaks in every process. So, in organizations, too, they grow from the top down, right? And right at the, at the very beginning, there's a break. And then there's two or three notes, and then there's another break. And then another three notes, and then there's the bottom. So what we have to make sure is that the whole thing is in tune. And are the people in the different places according to their actual nature and ability? And so, again, I have to say, and this is running long, but this is really important, that I am not a guru. And I don't want to be a guru ever again. Thank you very much. But I do want to have friends and I want to have co-workers who combine their energies. And so I think the wisest thing to do would be to consider that Osho Rajneesh is the guru. Let him be the guru. Huh? He blows away every guru, you know. He's like the state of the art in guru, right? And hope that maybe out of this experiment will come something innovative in that area. Uh, because like I said, if we can leverage the internet, and I think it has something to do with AI and pattern recognition and brainwave analysis, using deep learning on massive data sets of analog, uh, blah, blah, blah. So if you're with me, like I said in the 1.8, we can deliver right now a leverage of 100 times the efficiency of the typical traditional enlightenment process. 100 days. This is detailed in my book, The Dharma Source Solution. Here's the link. So you can download it. Get some background. This happened in 1984. So it's been well tested and well understood and, and very well validated by my subsequent experiences. So I'm very confident at this point that we can actually deliver at least to some people, at least to people who are properly prepared, you know, who already have some experience in meditation and so on like that, who have some self-control and so on. They can do with the technology that we have now in a hundred days or less. It took me like 60, 50 or 60. I wasn't keeping score. So if we can push the research to the next level, the next break, huh? what that would mean is there would be some kind of biofeedback device that would uh, simply um, Verify your state, like a road map. You're at this level, you're at that level. Okay, now you're doing this, come back. Okay. And that way you would gradually build up this muscle of meditation and very quickly be able to experience the secret of the golden flower. <laughs>